Hello guys, today we will be discussing about the anterior abdominal wall. Now the anterior abdominal wall extends from the xiphoid process and the costal margins up till the pubic symphysis and on the lateral side it is separated from the posterior abdominal wall by the mid axillary line. Now what we have done is we have given an incision on the midline leaving the umbilicus and moved downwards. Let's reflect the first layer that is the skin. After reflecting the skin, the layer that we can see over here is the superficial fascia. Now the superficial fascia of the abdomen consists of two different parts. We have a superficial fatty layer which is known as the fascia of camper and we have a deep membranous layer than uh, the fascia of scarpa. But you will have to keep one thing in mind. Below the level of the ASIS, the superficial fascia is divided into the superficial fatty layer as well as the deep membranous layer. But above the level, this superficial layer consists only of the fatty layer that is the camper's fascia. Always remember this, above the level of the ASIS, we are going to have only the fatty layer that is the fascia of camper. And below this layer, below the ASIS, the superficial fascia consists of the superficial fatty layer of camper as well as the deep membranous layer of scarpa. The deep membranous layer of scarpa is going to merge merge with the culis fascia which is present in the perineum. The next layer that we can see over here is directly the muscles. Now as we all know that the abdomen does not have a deep fascia. So the next, the next layer that we can see over here is the muscle that is the external oblique muscle. Now as we all can see the external oblique muscle the fibers are running downwards and forwards. This is running downwards and forwards. The muscle arises from the costal margin. This muscle goes downwards and gets inserted on the outer lip of the iliac press. Now if you can see over here this muscle has a fleshy fiber over here and this fleshy fibers is converted into an aponeurotic sheet or an aponeurotic part over here. So the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle along with the aponeurosis of all the other muscles we will see in a bit. This goes over the rectus abdominis muscle and gets converted into the rectus sheet. Now one important thing that you can see over the external oblique muscle is if you can see over here the lowest fibers of the external oblique muscle gets converted or it folds in the form of a j-shape right in this form if you can see over here the fibers are getting these fibers are folding on itself forming the floor of the inguinal canal now the lowest fibers over here this fiber gets converted into the inguinal ligament so this is basically known as the inguinal ligament or the Popart's ligament at the lower fibers you can see that we have an appearance of a triangular canal this triangular canal is known as the superficial inguinal ring now since this is a male cadaver this superficial inguinal ring we will have the transmission of the spermatic cord over here so the spermatic cord passes from the superficial inguinal ring in the male and if it is a female and if it would be a female then it is going to have the round ligament of the uterus so this is about the external oblique muscle the next muscle that we see is the internal oblique muscle now if you can see over here the internal oblique muscle it arises from it is going to arise from the inguinal ligament as well as from the intermediate area of the iliac press all these muscles they are going to go upwards in a direction opposite to the direction of the external oblique so the external oblique fibers they were going downwards and forwards the internal oblique fibers they are going to go upwards right they are going to go upwards towards the midline and will merge again it is going to convert into an aponeurotic sheet or an aponeurotic part and will merge with the aponeurosis of the other side in the linea alba and also will form the vector sheet the third layer that the, or the third muscle that we can see over here is the transversus abdominis muscle now this is a transversus abdominis muscle now the, if you look at the fibers of the transversus abdominis muscle the fibers are running straight the fibers are horizontal next to the transversus abdominis what we can see over here is the fascia transversalis if you can see over here this is the fascia transversalis and beneath the fascia transversalis this is a parietal peritoneum is a parietal peritoneum and then we enter into the abdominal cavity so from outwards if you look over here we are going to have 
layers. Now, what are the layers of the skin from before backwards? Oh, I mean the layers of the abdomen before backwards. We are going to have the skin, the superficial fascia, the external oblique muscle, the internal oblique muscle, the transversus abdominis muscle, the fascia transversalis, and then the parietal peritoneum. In between them, we are going to have the extra peritoneal fats. So these are the layers that you will find in the anterior abdominal wall. Now, apart from these three muscles, that is the external oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle, and the uh, transversus abdominis, we also have the rectus abdominis muscle over here. Now, the rectus abdominis muscle arises from the lateral part of the pubic bone. It goes upwards and gets inserted into, in four slips, into the xiphoid process, the fifth, sixth, and seventh costal cartilages. Now, here, when I reflect the rectus sheet, I can see the muscle over here. This is the rectus abdominis. Now, the detailed lecture of the rectus sheet will be explained to you in a different class. Thank you.